emojis. Hey, glad you came back. So today, um, I'm making um, some head cheese, or what you would call head cheese, right? It's South Sweet, right? Um, or you call it brawn, or it could be a, a pork terrine. They're all the same thing. Depending on who's making it, where you're from, you call it different things. But, however, um, head cheese and sauce meat, although they're made similarly, they're not the same. Because if you take head cheese and you add vinegar to it, it is now sauce. Okay? Now, a lot of people, including myself, prefer sauce meat to be chilled so the liquids becomes all gelatinous and then you can slice it like you're slicing bread or loaf, right? But there are people out there, and quite a bit as well, that likes their sauce to be uh, non-congealed and hot. So when it's cold, it's congealed. When it's hot, it's like it makes a nice little sauce, a little tangy sauce. And I'm going to show you how to make the sauce meat, okay? I know I've been busy um, working on my hot sauce, getting the hot sauce out there because people are asking for it. Um, so now making it available. Now whether they uh, partake in that, it's up to them. But they ask for it. The site's up. Strawstraw.com. If you want to try the hot sauce, go there. Order your bottle or two. Right, and tell me what you think. Right. So far the reviews have been positive. Um, but we'll see. You know, everybody's taste is different. You absolutely cannot please everybody, but. For those who are wanting it, strawstraw.com, go get yourself a, a bottle or two, and I hope you like it. If you do, I'll make some more. How about that? I'll make a deal with you. I'll make bigger batches and throw some out there for you. All right. Having said that, let's get to this. Watch the video. See how I make this. Um, but look, I almost forgot. Look at this. This is what we're making. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Oh, mouth water. I gotta get some. Gotta get some. Hold on. Traditionally, you have them crackers, but for me, I eat it without crackers. But for you guys, we're doing cracker time. Mm hmm. It's tangy. I like mine cold, so it's really cold. Yeah, I took a big bite. I'm gonna take another one. I'll be playing around. Make sure you get that gelatin on there. Mm hmm Oh yeah. Mine's like rock cracker. Hope you enjoy this. If you do, give me some thumbs up action. Subscribe. Let's get to it. I, I know I'm, I'm talking, but hey, somebody told me I talk too much. But here's the deal. These videos are for my girls, as you guys always know. You already know it if you've been following the channel. This is for my girls when the days eventually get here that I'm not around. I can still teach them how to make the dishes that I made for them as they were growing up. Now, if I happen to help some people on the way, good to go. I'm all for it. But just remember, my videos most times are not short because I explain some things because I need that to carry forward if my girls watch the video and want to duplicate what I made. Right? If you want shorter videos, go find a shorter video, but you won't find it here. Not really. Well, let's get to it. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, this is Charles Chiron. That is the best elevated music I ever heard. All right, we're going to start with the meats first. So here we have two pounds of cubed um, pork belly. We have about four pounds of hog mogs. All these meats, I've cleaned them. 
Here we have about two pounds of pig feet. We have two pounds of um, hog uh, shank, if you will, right? Ham hock, right? Just sliced up. And here we have five pounds of pig ears. And we're going to put these in the boil for about a half hour to get the nasties off of them. Okay, now we're, that there's bones in the pig feet, just to make it easier, I'm going to put the pig feet and the ham hocks, I'm going to wrap it up in some cheesecloth, right, just to make it easier to remove from the water. So I can keep all the bones in one spot. Okay, he's wrapped. And I'm gonna keep it like this through the parboil and the regular cook. Okay. Now let's get these in this water. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, put our pig ears in. Now we're gonna put our hog mogs in. And I didn't cut the hog mogs up into bite-sized pieces yet. I'm gonna do that after it parboils. Put our bony parts in. Pork belly. down. We're just going to cover this and crack it just a bit. And we're going to let this go for about 35 minutes, 40 minutes. We're going to watch it because we don't want it to overflow. Okay, look, so, again, the reason why we boiled this, the first, you know, we boiled it first, and we're going to drain it all off. As you as you see in behind me here, this was the initial pot, okay? But I, you saw what was happening. It was an overflow, so I had to go for the big boy here. So because of that, um, and now I got to use a bigger strainer in this initial deal. So, I gotta break out this guy. Yeah. My seafood strainer, or what I use for seafood. Uh, I mean, you gotta do it, right? Yeah, it's big as hell, but hey, you gotta do it. So, let's get this, this uh, strain, and what we're gonna do when we get that strain, we're just gonna give the meat a quick rinse in the strainer, right? And then we're going to take the meat out not the ham hocks and the pig feet that are in the cheesecloth. We're going to leave that in there. We're going to cut up the other meat to more manageable sizes. And then we're going to take our vegetables, and I'll show you here in a minute, and we're going to wrap that in cheesecloth to, uh, for the long boil. Okay, It's going to be a long boil. right? This has got to cook for four and a half to five hours. 
they on this next set. Let's get to it. And this is heavy, so I want to be careful not hurt myself. And right off the bat, I already see that I gotta put another layer of cheesecloth on the pig's feet and the ham hock. So we're gonna do that right now. While trying not to burn myself. guy I'm going to rinse the pot out get the pot cleaned up so that we are able to start everything back up again now while the meat is cooling down, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add four cups of chicken broth, right? Four cups of chicken broth, right? And then four cups of regular, just plain water to start. We're going to cup the meat and we're going to add it back to that big pot to start it going, right? So I'm going to add this and then four more cups of water, so a total of eight cups of liquid to start, okay? Then once we cut the meat up and put it in there, we'll see how much more water we need to add. Yes, you can go all chicken stock. Yes, you can do that. You can go all pork stock if you want. Right? Or vegetables. It's up to you. Right? But the thing is, while I'm working on this meat, I want the uh, broth or the liquid to start to, to start get hot, coming up to a boil. It doesn't have to boil, but I want to give it that head start. Now, also during this time, I'm going to add the pig feet and the ham hocks that are in the cheesecloth. I'm going to put that in there while I work on this other stuff. All right, so now I'm going to cut these guys up. Let me, uh, they're starting to cool down, but since they were cooking for about 45 minutes, it should be easier to cut now. So see, just cutting it up. More manageable slices. So you see these ears, if you didn't cook them the way I cooked them, they'd be tough right now, hard to cut. I'm just gonna put that in there. I might cut these in half, they're kind of wide. And now when you, after the final cook, they're gonna be real tender. And at this stage, since I've only, you know, we've only blanched them for like 40 minutes, 45 minutes, don't taste them now. You will go to the hospital because it's it's not safe at this point. See, they're not completely tender yet, and they shouldn't be. Because they've only been cooking for an hour. You have to cook ears a lot longer than that. Just make sure you have, you know, a, a sharp knife so you can get all this. When you're cutting them at this stage, this makes it easier. You know, a little piece of pork belly, they're already cut in cubes. You don't have to cut them any further. I'm just cutting them just because, since I'm already in a cutting mode as it is. And yes, I could use scissors for this. Yes, I could use a cleaver for this, but I didn't. Okay. So 
So we're going to go through these and um, we'll be back to the next step. All right, so back here we have our cut up meat. Now you want to cut it up. This does not include the pig feet, nor does it include the ham hock. Here we have three quarters of a cup of apple cider vinegar. We have about four stalks of celery that's cut up. We have two medium to large onions cut up. We have a green and a yellow bell pepper cut up. We have about a quarter of a cup of parsley that we just roughly chopped. We have about a quarter of a cup of minced garlic. We have about a third of a cup of pickling spice. Right? We have about a tablespoon of crushed red pepper flakes. We have about two tablespoons of black pepper. About two, ta two tablespoons of kosher salt. And we have about two teaspoons of Prag powder. Now this is a curing agent, right? Because we want this to cure. It's gonna, it's going to increase the uh, stability and shelf life of your product. All right, let's get these uh, in the pot. Okay, the first thing you want to do. I decided not to wrap the vegetables in a uh, cheesecloth. So it's gonna leave it like this. So first, we want to add our meats into it. Yep, get all those in there. Add our celery. Our onions. Right, we're just adding everything into it. Our bell peppers. Bell peppers in there. Salt. Pepper. Crushed red pepper flakes. Our pickling spices. Our curing powder, it's a curing salt. The prag powder, we get that in there. Our garlic goes in. Parsley, sprinkle that around. vinegar in. And now, get this all in here, and we need to put enough fluid in here, whether it be broth or water. We already had some broth, so I'm going to fill the rest of this with water, but we want this to go, we want this to cover it cover the meat by at least an inch. All right, I'm going to add the top. Now, once this comes up to a boil, Right, which, well, the size of my pot is probably going to take me about 20 minutes or so. Once it comes up to a boil, at that point, we're going to go four and a half to five hours. Okay? So when it comes up to a boil, we're going to reduce it down to low, let it simmer for four and a half to five hours. So I'll see you then. Okay, so it's been five hours. It's been, you know, simmering for five hours. Uh, I've tasted it. Tastes good. Uh, at this point, this is where, if you wanted to, um, you could add more spices to the broth. Because what we're going to be doing, we're going to be taking the meat out, okay? And we're going to take some of the broth, which I'm going to do real quick here, 
and we're gonna put it in a little container and put it in the refrigerator for about a half hour um, to, to, so it can set. Okay, so we can see if the consistency is the way we want it. If it's not, um, we will reduce uh, the liquid by about a quarter, maybe 50%, we'll see. So let me grab this broth, put it in the refrigerator, no, my mouth of water. Um, and this will be setting in the refrigerator while we're getting the meat. Now because this meat is really hot right now, let it cool a bit, but I get that liner's on. I'm gonna put under my gloves. Because this process right here is slightly it can be slightly time consuming. The fat, not really worrying about the fat too much. The hops is is done its purpose. Just put the gels in into the broth. You gotta be careful because of these bones, especially on the pig feet. This meat, look how tender it is. This is tender.
this is going into a 170 degree oven while our test uh, gelatin set. Okay, so our test, the test, you know, it, I mean, it's gelatinous, right? But it wasn't as firm as I wanted it to be. So, uh, I reduced the liquid by 25%. So now we're going to build these terrines. And so I have these two terrines here. I got a small and a little one. And I lined them with saran wrap to make them easier to pull out of the mold. So you just put them in I would say about maybe 90% of the way you don't need to pack it okay, let me get the smaller one Now what we need to do, take our broth, and add that to it. The best way i found to do that is with a measuring cup, believe it or not. Get some of your broth. Pour it right over it. You want to make sure it covers it. Cover it. Put your saran wrap. Be a lot easier with the little one because of the size of our saran wrap. For the big one, we're going to need more saran wrap. The reason I'm putting putting the saran wrap on it is to enable me to one get it out of the mold easier, and two, it will allow me to press it down and make it flat, okay, like that. Now I'm going to do the rest of this and put it in the fridge. Now these are going to go into the fridge basically overnight. Now in my case, I'm probably not going to look at them for probably 24 hours really before you see it again. Because right now, it is like hella early in the morning. Right now it's about 4.30, 4.38 in the 
in the morning, probably closer to 445. Um, so I'm just going to put it in here and then, to be honest, I'm going to go to bed. You know, maybe in a day, I'll check it. But depending on your refrigerator, you know, a good 12 hours and you should be good to go. So I'll show you what I got when I get done with this. I'll show you what's going to be going in your refrigerator when I get done with this. Be back. So this is what we got. Now this is going to go into the refrigerator. I'll probably leave it in there for about a day. You don't need 12 hours. I'm going to go for a day. Um, and we'll see what we got. Amen. Okay, just real quick. I know you're watching the video right now, but just real quick. Look. Uh, you asked for it. The hot sauces are available, right, uh, at strawstraw.com. It's sweet. It's thick. Oh, tropical habanero. I know you're going to love it. So check it out. Let me let you get back to your video. Enjoy your day. Okay, so now I know I said 12 hours or so, but uh, life happens, right? And it's actually been about a day and a half bonus, right? Because the longer it sits in the refrigerator, the more it's going to congeal. Um, but about the 12-hour mark is a sweet spot um, where you'll be able to uh, it'll be completely uh, gelatinous. Okay? So it's been about a day and a half. Um, so I'm taking one of these these smaller ones, right? Right here. And we're going to take this out and we're going to look at it and then we're going to plate it up and see what we got. Let's get to it. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do, pop right out because we had the saran wrap around it. Open it up. Look at that. Nice. Nice congeal. Let's play it up, see what we got. Okay, here we have it. We have our sauce meat, our hake cheese, right? Our pork head cheese, our brawn, if you want to call it brawn, we are in, or you can call it a pork terrine. This is what it is. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the peanut gallery, hey, Join the peanut gallery. Our arms are open. We have room. And we'll leave the light on for you so you can find us even in the dark. Also, if we're not connected on Instagram, go to Instagram. Put my name in, Shraw Shraw, look for the great cat, and let's connect. That being said, I'm about to get in on this. My mouth is watering. I can barely talk. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your day.